Welcome to The Big Picture. I'm Phil Arno. When I was uh, earning a psychology degree about 120 years ago, we were taught a lot about different common behavioral traits that have been around since humans first walked the earth. For the most part, people behave very predictable and we all have the same desires and the same fears. What drives us is not all that different, regardless of who we are. And I remember one time when I was sitting in class, one of our professors got up and he told the class a, a very short, simple story that illustrated a universal truth about a trait that gets people in trouble all the time. I'm sure the story is as old as the hills, but it was the first time I had heard it, and it really made an impression on me. It's called The Monkey's Dilemma. And it goes something like this. In the jungles of South America, there's a certain kind of monkey which is very fast and very agile and almost impossible to catch. But the natives have solved the problem by understanding the animal's desires. They take a container with a small opening and they fasten it to a tree. And they put some food into it, food that the monkey just can't resist. Well, the monkey, sure enough, he senses that food and he comes along and he reaches into this container. He grabs a handful of that food. And he tries to pull his fist out and guess what? His hand is too big to get out of that container. Try as he might, that darn hand won't come out. Meanwhile, along comes the native, probably whistling a very happy tune, and he grabs that monkey as easy as picking an apple off the tree. The moral of the story is, sometimes we all, each and every one of us, want something so badly that we just, just can't let go of it. Even if it's something that's destructive to us and everything that we are, even if we know that hanging on is causing us pain and trouble and all things bad. Does that sound familiar? Well, my guest is very familiar with that kind of behavior when it comes to women caught up in abusive relationships. Mary Murphy is well known around Western New York. She was a reporter for Channel 7 for many years. She turned to politics and became the supervisor of the town of uh, Orchard Park. And now she wears a different hat running the Family Justice Center, an organization with four lo locations here in Western New York that helps women who are caught up in, you might say, addictive or those destructive relationships and really have no place to turn for help. I welcome now to the show Mary Murphy. Hi, Phil. Thank you for having me. I want to say right off the bat, men can be victims of abusive relationships, too. That's true. We define it one word so you can file it up here and use it as a yardstick, am I, am I not? Victims of, we call it domestic violence, intimate partner abuse, don't necessarily ever identify themselves as a victim of domestic violence. Mm -hmm. um, the word is control, mm -hmm. one person trying to control every aspect of another person's life. And it's complex mm -hmm. uh, business. Perpetrators, if there is a shining light when it comes to this public health crisis, are all playing out of the same handbook. Whether it's a male perpetrator, a female mm -hmm. perpetrator, most, the majority of our clients are women, but we absolutely see male victims of the one word, control. Again, it's one person trying to control every aspect of another person's life. They do it through a variety of methods, violence, a tool mm -hmm. in the toolbox, the threat of violence, you know, dangling that threat over the head of their victim in order to maintain control. We know that abusers are lazy. They'd rather scare the living daylights out of somebody than actually beat the living daylights out of somebody. But they'll resort to either to maintain that control. In the other methods, highly, highly, highly effective, emotional, psychological, financial, verbal, sexual, digital abuse, leaving their victims in a hundred million pieces. Perpetrators, again, playing out of the same handbook, will never take responsibility for the abuse. They will, 99% of the time, blame it on the victim or somebody else made them do it. So it is complex business and trauma is involved. And, and, and the problem really comes <clears throat> from when the victim 
again, like in my intro, can't, can't let go be, for whatever fear or, or reasoning is involved. There's an addiction to the, the relationship or a fear of letting go of the relationship. Yeah, let's, yeah. again, we're gonna, we're gonna blame the perpetrator. We're gonna, the behavior rests with the perpetrator. So we're not gonna blame the victim in any way, right. shape or form. We have a group of 36 women now, ranging in age from 18 to 81, who got out of an abusive relationship, went through trauma-informed therapy, and are now in healthy relationships, not with that perpetrator, because you're not gonna change somebody who makes that choice to abuse. There's a lot of elements that, that cause someone to hang on to it. Well, of course. Number one, they're brainwashed into believing, victims are brainwashed mm -hmm. by the perpetrator into believing they're the problem, that they deserve the abuse, they cause the abuse, and they're responsible for the abuse. Again, an abuser will never take responsibility for the bad behavior. But the key to understanding it is to understand <clears throat> that nobody falls in love with a monster. They fall in mm -hmm. love with a loving, charming, engaging, funny, often popular, successful angel. Mm -hmm. So victims-to-be are swept off their feet by these angels in this incredible romance. And it isn't until the first punch or hit comes that a, that a victim realizes, wait a minute, I've been worn down emotionally and psychologically. Mm -hmm. If you go right to the playbook, because perpetrators are all playing out of the same handbook, one, get them swept off their feet in these incredible mm -hmm. romances. Number two, hone in on one perceived flaw that the victim has, right, mm -hmm. and not let go. Mm -hmm. And that parlays into hours on end behind closed doors of humiliation. My 36 women who got mm -hmm. out tell me they were often awakened in the middle of the night by the perpetrator, screaming for a couple hours on end, in their ear, humiliating, saying some of the most horrible things you could ever imagine. <clears throat> But they tell me by the time it went physical, they were so worn down emotionally and psychologically that they couldn't even pinpoint that moment in time. And they were brainwashed into believing all the perpetrator's bad behavior was their fault. There's, <clears throat> kind of a, there's a, a PSA that you have that I, we, we can call up. It, it kind of goes to the, the dilemma and the, the, the darkness that right. these people find themselves in. Can we take a look at that, uh, that video? What is it that pulls you back to the abuse? Is it love? Is it fear? Is it shame? Or is it the idea that no one can really help? Help you leave. Help you get free. Help you become the woman you once were and long to be again. For help, call 558-SAFE. Family Justice Center. You're safe here. Now there is hope for these. Absolutely, you know, these, it, absolutely. It, it, it is tough, though. I mean, people do need to, to be able to turn to someone, and that's right. where you're, the you're Family there. Justice Center exists to help people. Number one, figure out what's going on. Mm -hmm. They walk in. Family members have told them. Colleagues have told them. Maybe strangers have told them. Worried about your safety. There's some big red flags going on mm -hmm. that are indicative of the fact that you may be headed for some danger. And so they can come into the Family Justice Center. We have five domestic violence advocates who can ask them a list of questions. Do you feel safe with your partner, right? Mm -hmm. My women tell me that it didn't occur to them they were victims of domestic violence when they were in it, because again, they were brainwashed to believe it was their fault. They were told if they left, they were dead, or you leave, I'll take out those children, right? Children being used as pawns in these cases by these control freaks, we hear that every few minutes. Or I'll hire the best attorney in town if you t wanna leave. I'll get witness after witness on that witness stand to declare you a crazy whack job of a mother. I have pictures. You will not have an attorney. The judge will award me full custody, at which point I will cut off all access. You haven't worked in 15 years. Well, you wouldn't let her, right? Right out of the handbook. You never got that college degree. Well, you wouldn't let her. Again, this is about power and control and convincing a person this horrible behavior is their fault and they deserved it. I think it's important too, Phil, to understand that if you're, if you're dealing with somebody you suspect is in an abusive relationship, trust your gut number one and number two understand there's trauma going on victims the experts have been telling us for decades are traumatized by this abuse that undermines their ability to think clearly to make logical decisions to even articulate accurately what's going on in the relationship trauma can undermine their ability to function normally 
and they're convinced they're the problem. If I just did this and not that, none of this would have happened. The most dangerous time is when the control freak realizes control is coming undone. They can go lethal like that. And that's where the Family Justice Center comes in. The advocate can sit them down and say, have you been strangled? That's a big red flag that this relationship is headed for the hospital or God forbid the cemetery. Are you being stalked? Are you convinced that this is all your fault? Have you been threatened with death or extreme violence if you leave? I, I, I would think that the biggest obstacle is the initial seeking of help because you're, you're in this dark place, you're under the control of somebody who's mm -hmm. a narcissist or a psychopath or, or whatever, they're in control right. and they're so dominant that you're you're in a, again, a very dark place and, and fear is the, is the dominant factor. Right. So reaching out to begin with has got to be the most difficult decision. Right. So you can be in a position where you can say, look, do that one thing, take this one action and then we can right. talk. Right. And, and it, we, it, we never tell anybody what to do. Mm -hmm. And fear is right up there in terms of the strongest emotion mm -hmm. but there's an emotion that can trump fear mm -hmm. and this comes from my 36 women who we work with very closely who got out the emotion that can trump fear trump fear you leave your dead you leave i'll kill the kids right right mm -hmm. out of the playbook you leave i'll kill myself you want that on your life mm -hmm. the emotion that can trump that kind of fear is shame and embarrassment and that is the strongest emotion that my survivors mm -hmm. tell me they were experiencing. Again, convinced that they caused this somehow. And our message is clear. Nobody deserves to be in an abusive relationship. You sure as heck didn't cause it. You're not mm -hmm. responsible for it, right? We're gonna pin mm -hmm. the blame where it belongs. But the most effective tool in the toolbox of the abuser, mm -hmm. the ability of that monster to morph back into that loving, charming, funny, engaging angel they fell in love with. And it takes on average seven to eight times to permanently leave an abusive relationship because it takes seven to eight times for somebody on average to figure out the monster is the real person and that angel that I fell in love with is the fake. Okay, you are so never gonna change that. As always, this goes by so quickly. And <clears throat> we're gonna wrap up this segment. If you were to just look into the camera and someone who's out there talk, they're thinking now that they may be in a position where they have to make this decision, how do I get help? What would you say to that I person I would say right call now? the Family Justice Center. Call the Family Justice Center and talk to a domestic violence advocate. We have anything and everything you need right in one place. We don't judge. We understand people feel embarrassed. They feel shame. They're scared to death. It is an overwhelming and thought you, process you to have this, to get up you know, one step you, at a time and we never tell our clients yeah. what to do we so figure it's not going to be a, a, a you're not going to escalate their problems you're going to help them quite the opposite right. we have everything they need everybody leaves with a safety plan anything they could possibly need or any question they want answered and again the power is going to rest with the client so hop on our website and take a look at it uh, good family advice. justice center good google it up we Absolutely. don't judge, and uh, we're there for them every step of the way, okay. day by day, piece by piece. Great. Well, thanks for this tremendous advice. Uh, when we come back, I'll be talking to another familiar personality from Buffalo, and we'll be talking about something that Mary's connected to in a slightly different way. Stay tuned. <laughs>